Father Menios, with his silence, with his patience, the elder of joy, he was a special, the elder of joy and pain at the same time, the leper. He was the priest of the community of lepers of Athens, himself being infected by leprosy from his youth, and now he served the community hospital of lepers. This man was my father confessor because Elder Iacobus was far away, and I wished to confess my thoughts, my sins as a human being. So I found this man, and when I first met him, he was quite young, he was 49 years old. He was born in 1931 in Crete, and he had this great love for his birthplace. He requested to be buried in Crete, even though he spent most of his life in Athens. His character could easily be understood only in the context of the man of Crete. He was a criticos, a brave soul, a brave man in general, a levendis, as we say in Greek, levendis anthropos. This man received God's light very young. He truly felt the light in his heart. And this happened while he was speaking to his sister, Amalia. He told her, Amalia, the light of Christ just came to my heart. I must now go and become a monk at the monastery of St. Nikitas, a small monastery of the nearby area of Heraklion. And he goes and becomes a monk there, and he accepts the great cross of the disease of leprosy, and his elder had to tell him, my child, you cannot stay with us here any longer because of your condition. Leprosy was very infectious back then. Shortly after that, his elder took him, supplied him with some money, and put him on a small boat heading towards the isolated colony of lepers on a deserted island of Pinalanga. And later, they transferred them to the community hospital of lepers in Athens. There, he met Elder Nikiforos, spiritual child of St. Anthimos of Pios, a man of a great spiritual stature. In the book of St. Anthimos of Pios, there's a special chapter for Elder Nikiforos. Elder Nikiforos had the reputation of the saint among the lepers. This is what they called him. And here, in three years, under his eldership, of Manuel's learned the trade or the technique of noetic prayer. Subsequently, Elder Nikiforos dies, and of Manuel's is already the elder, the elder trained by the great patience needed for the condition of leprosy from the isolation. We must mention that back then, the lepers were quarantined. The grounds were enclosed by tall steel fences and communication with outsiders was strictly prohibited. Only after 1965, the lepers began to have contact with the rest of the healthy people of Athens. And to our dismay, we discovered that those of us on the outside were ill, while most of the people inside this particular leprosy quarters achieved sainthood. Like Evangelio, for example, what a saint. This woman was a saint, a leper, blind, paralyzed. Her hands were totally eaten by leprosy. She had no hands at all. Yet these people were full of grace. They knew how to pray incessantly. So let's look at a recipe from Father of Menios, since many people today like to have a recipe. Father of Menios read prayers five hours a day. He read from the great Orologion, the hours, the Psalter, Paracliticii, five hours every day, like Papa Nicholas Planas. And many would tell him, you're the new Nicholas Planas of Athens. And he used to say, not at all, he's a saint, and I'm nothing of that sort. He celebrated liturgy almost every day, and towards the end of his life, he used to go to many, many homes of the area of Athens, and even the suburbs, because the residents discovered that his prayers and blessings were very powerful and heard by God. So he ran all over the Athenian Valley to read blessings, supplications, and holy unction services. He was a man of great spiritual stature, a precious diamond. Towards the end of his life, he remained in the Athenian hospital Evangelismos, and he heard that 
the Archbishop of Athens and all Greece, Seraphim, was on his deathbed. He loved the Archbishop and he generally honored and revered all bishops. He never criticized anyone and he never passed any judgment on a single human being. Never. So he heard that Seraphim is dying, so he mentions to one of my friends, priest monk, please, Father Yanadia, I want you to take me to get the blessing of the Archbishop. And even though the Archbishop Seraphim was in a coma, when the man of God of Menios kneels next to him, he opens his eyes, he confesses to Elder of Menios, and the latter leaves full of joy. He goes back to the hospital, and after a few days, the nurses heard him chant the Archbishop's Femi, Seraphim, the most blessed Archbishop of all Greece, Seraphim, Tumakariotati, Kethoproflitu, Mitropolitu. Elder, what's come over you? And you're chanting the Archbishop's Femi. Seraphim is leaving, he's leaving, his soul is being carried by angels in heaven. Elder, the Archbishop did not die yet. No, he just left. He just left us. Not long after that, the nurses were extremely surprised to see on television a special news report. The Archbishop of Athens and all Greece has slept in the Lord a few minutes ago. And here the Elder of Menios had reported this before the television's newcast. He had his own television inside of him. And he was so humble that he hid it. Most of the time, he hid his gifts. Father Porfirius used to tell me that this man is a true saint. He prays to God to keep his gifts hidden and not to be revealed until the very end of his life. And that's how it came to be. And Father Porfirius used to tell me when I was a student, please, Vreomir, do me a favor and bring me Father of Menus so I can confess so I can see a man, a human being. What do you mean, Elder? You have dozens of people around you every day, and you speak to them, you see them all the time, and you want to see a man? Yes, Omiros, I want someone who speaks my language, so please bring me Father of Many so I can confess. Now, if you went to a normal everyday priest like myself and our peers, and you would tell them, Father Porfirius needs confession, we would start the humble talk. Who am I to hear the confession of a saint? I'm unworthy. Uh, the humble talk, which usually lacks humility. Now listen to Father of Menius's simplistic approach. I mentioned to him, Elder, I'm going to find someone with a car to take us to Father Porfirios one of these days because he wants to have the sacrament of confession. Father of Menius replied very simply and naturally, Go ahead, find a driver, and I will take a Petrahili, and it will be on our way. Very simply, without any further superfluous comments and vain words. No idle talk. So I did find someone to drive us and took Father of Menius to Father Porfirius. And when he came out of the confessional, we were eyewitnesses of a man who just descended from Mount Sinai. We saw the face of Father of Menios take the color of a red hot brick, radiating a glow similar to the face of Moses when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai with a fiery red hot face. We were shocked at the sight of his face. And then Father of Menios waved for me to go near him, and he took a few thousand drachmas and he said, Give this to Father Porfirios to use in his building fund for all these projects that he's undertaking around here. So I took the money and I went to Elder Porfirios and I told him, Elder, this is from Elder of Menios to use for your building expenses here. He tells me, you have an awesome responsibility. You are around a great man of God and please my son, as long as you are around Athens, Bring him to me now and then so I can confess. You have no idea how much rest my soul found today and how much it was refreshed from this fountain of Crete. Your Eminence, thank you for sharing this great blessing with us. Great blessing indeed. To close the segment, I asked Elder of Menios 
how did you get to know Father Porfirius? Because they had great love between them. And the truth is that Elder Porfirius was the link that connected all of them, Paisius, Iacobus, of Manius, and that's why I call him the Dean of Elders. And Father Manius answered me, let me tell you, after Saint Nectarius healed me, as we mentioned before, he was a leper and Saint Nectarius appeared to him and healed him so he could become a priest. He healed his hands. So every Saturday, the other lepers used to give me money so I could do their shopping from the public marketplace of Athens in Ammonia. And I could not help notice outside of the public clinic, another Athenian hospital where Father Porfirios was the chaplain for years. So as I was walking outside of this public clinic, I was seeing a priest full of light, surrounded by light. And I kept wondering, who is this man? He's a priest in the world. Father Porfirios, by the way, did not dress like a monk. And this is a very fine detail, which says a lot. Father Porfirios, all the years in Athens, never wore anything to show that he was a monk. He wore his kalimafi and the garb of a simple priest. Father of Menius, likewise, when he would come into Athens, he came with his kalimafi. They avoided displaying their ascetic identity. They felt that the other people should not notice that they were monks. They tried to hide their monastic identity to avoid praise. And I used to watch this light around Father Porfirius. Later on, I went to the chapel of the Polyclinic Hospital because I was passing outside and I heard the sounds of a divine liturgy and I was drawn inside to light a candle. And to my great surprise, I see this light-bearing priest celebrating the divine liturgy with angels hovering around and above his right and left side. I was mesmerized. I sat there dumbfounded, saying to myself, what great grace this man has been granted from God to liturgize with angels. At the end of the divine liturgy, I saw a couple of other priests go inside the altar to receive his blessing. And I thought, why don't I go inside myself to meet this man of grace? And people in the meantime told me that this is Father Porfirius. So I went inside and I made a prostration in front of him. And he prostrated in front of me as well. And I told him, Father Porfirius, what great grace you have been given by God to liturgize with angels. What did he tell you, Elder? I asked. He responded with a smile and said, And what great grace God has also given you, Father of Manios, to see these angels whom I don't see. This is so beautiful, Your Eminence. Indeed, this is so beautiful. So while Father Porfirius was not seeing the angels, Father of Manios, the simple one, could see them. When I was ordained, Father of Manios continued, Father Porfirius sent me a small note with three statements, but I will never reveal these exhortations to anyone.